Well, thank you very much, Chair Van Hollen and Ranking Member Hagerty. Um, as Vice Chair Collins, who is also here with us today, and I made clear when we announced our plan to return this committee to regular order, um, we have a responsibility to deliver for the American people by working together uh, to draft and pass funding bills that strengthen our economy and keep America competitive on the world stage and make sure that our families here at home are financially secure and thriving. This is no small feat, as we all know, but this hearing is really an important reminder that when it comes to keeping our nation strong, secure, and competitive. It is not just about how much we spend on defense, which is important. It is also important how strong our economy is. And I mean on Main Street, not just on Wall Street. And as uh, so we've seen the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank have been a really stark reminder of the important role Treasury does play, regulating our banks, ensuring our economy is sound, and protecting American workers and savers from paying the price for Wall Street's mistakes. And that's really critical because working families are the backbone of this economy. And that means when our families are less financially secure, our nation is less financially secure. Strong funding for treasure means strong enforcement of our sanctions against Russia and Iran, the drug cartels, and other dangerous actors. It also means when my constituents call the IRS with a question about their taxes, they can actually get a real person on the other end of the line. And thanks to the funding that Democrats passed, the IRS is now answering 90% of its phone calls. Uh, that is a dramatic improvement from the 13% last year. But we still are playing catch up on these investments. The technology that handles Americans' tax returns, for example, is over 60 years old. So we need a modern IRS, and that won't just mean fewer uh, tax cheats, differing families when it comes to paying their fair share. It means that Americans' personal financial information is safer from cyber attacks or nefarious actors. And it will mean we could put more money back in families' pockets when it comes to the tax refunds and relief that they are entitled to, like the child care tax credit President Biden proposes reinstating in this budget. Secretary Yellen, I asked you about the IRS spend plan for the IRA funding in our call when we talked last month. Congress still doesn't have that. Uh, and I want to join Chair Van Hollen in saying the department has had enough time to produce it, and we expect to see it. And lastly, families, of course, are also counting on us to raise the debt limit. You just talked about this without drama, without delay. And let me just be clear as you were that the full faith and credit of the United States, that is to pay our bills on time like every family is expected to, is not something that should ever be held hostage to score cheap political points at the expense of working people in this country. Uh, not getting that done would be catastrophic for our economy. So I hope we can do this in a straightforward, bipartisan way, as we have many times under both Republican and Democratic leadership. So again, thank you for being here today. And I just want to say I'm going to be very closely paying attention to the work um, on the issues raised by the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. And I expect that you will keep us updated on this as we move along. Yes, of course, I'd be glad to. Thank you. In, in terms of questions, uh, last year I was able to pass a sweeping bipartisan retirement bill in our Secure 2.0 Act that will increase families' financial resiliency and help more families save for a dignified retirement and make it easier for businesses to offer retirement plans. Can you tell us what resources Treasury will need to implement all of Secure's directives in a timely manner? Yes, um, there, there are some resources the Treasury will need, and they're included in the 2024 budget. Um, my understanding is um, that the Bureau of Fiscal Services will need about $10 million to complete their effort to digitize savings bonds. The Office of Tax Policy will need about a million and a half dollars to hire additional OTP, Office of Tax Policy staff, to write uh, the regulations and rules. And IRS will be faced with implementation of many of the features of this, and uh, there's money included in the budget, um, I believe an additional ten and a half million for IT funds and an additional roughly 
five and a half million dollars, and this would go from fiscal 23 through 27 uh, for additional um, lawyers in the chief counsel staff. Okay, thank you for thank you for that summary, and I'll be following that very carefully as we put this bill together. Um, as I mentioned, um, I do expect from you a detailed plan about how the how, how the IRS is intending to use the IRA money. Without that, we're hearing all kinds of conflated things about eighty seven thousand people in an army kind of thing. T tell us when we're going to see that plan, so we can see the detail. Of in how in a matter of weeks, I have seen a a draft of the plan. It's not final, but um, you should see it very shortly. Okay, uh, we, we need to see that because it is really important of course, for our taxpayers very... to be able to call the IRS and get a response. It is really important for us to be able yes. to have um, the new technology we need, but we need to see your span plan so we have a real concrete yeah, plan. You, you will see that. Okay, and finally, um, I know President Biden's 24 budget is rightly called a blue collar blueprint to rebuild America. Um, and that blueprint would not only help families with lower health care costs, but also invest in quality child care, ensure giant corporations and billionaires pay their fair share, a lot more. Um, but I wanted to ask you, do you think that the president's budget would increase inflation or put us on a past path to fiscal ruin, as some, uh, some of our colleagues have suggested? No, I don't. It's, um, it does invest in America, in our people, in our economy, in ways that will make it more productive, but it proposes ways to pay for that. And um, in fact, over 10 years, it involves deficit reduction amounting to $3 trillion. So it puts us on a more secure and prudent fiscal path. Um, it Many of the investments that are proposed could be viewed as expanding supply. Um, Senator Haggerty mentioned the importance of supply and inflation is a matter of supply and demand. And um, the supply side of our economy is important. We know that private investment, capital formation matters, and uh, that's what traditional supply side economics has always focused on. I've coined the term modern supply side economics. I believe the supply side of the economy is important, but um, there are other kinds of investments that are also critical, and that's what's included in this budget. Funding for education, human capital, investing in people, uh, investing in child care, so children, in yep. child care, um, early childhood education, enabling more people to work. Uh, investing in research and development that um, improve our technology and productivity. So there are very significant investments um, in our economy that will expand its capacity and ability to supply goods and services. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th thank